Marketing channels has changed a lot since marketing was introduced as a discipline. Today, social media is an important and inseparable element of marketing. Look at this example, ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I'm sure some of you has att have attended this challenge as well. The challenge has picked up so quickly, more than any other campaigns in history. It started in mid-July by a pro golfer, and then it took up in almost one month. And uh, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Oprah, Patrick Stewart, Kermit the Frog, I mean, all, all the people, all the people that we know, more than hundreds of thousands of celebrity people or any other people have attended this challenge. And then it became a huge success for ALS disease awareness and people's participation. So how did it become possible? And when we look at the numbers, we can see that the ALS challenge helped the ALS, uh, ALS association collect more than hundreds of millions of dollars. And the previous year's donations was only $3 million. And around the world, the challenge helped the association uh, collect more than $220 million. So when we look at what made Ice Bucket Challenge so successful, we can say that it was simple, it was so easy to understand, it was so easy to communicate. Second, it was fun. So you just throw a bucket of ice or a bucket of cold water on you. And it was fun to do because it was summertime. So you couldn't have this kind of challenge in, in the winter. So it was uh, correctly the true type of challenge for that season. And it was big. It was easy to communicate. And it was uh, simple to understand for all other uh, people. So it had a huge opportunity, huge potential to go, to go big. And another one is it was for a cause. So not only the challenge invited people just for fun or it was simple, but it was for helping people. So the challenge worked like that. Whenever you, you poured some water, you challenged three of your friends to do the same. And also you donate some part of money, some money uh, for the association. So you help people by creating awareness and by inviting your other people. And immediacy. So your invitations were valid only for the next, uh, ne next few days, next 48 hours. So people were urged to, to do the same for their friends. And multiplication. So through this uh, challenge, you were inviting three of your friends. So that's why how it multiplied uh, through your social network. And then it helped you to feel good and it helped you to, to, to feel pride in what you are doing. So that was essential for the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge to be successful. Uh, and we call this type of events as viral events, viral communication. So we need a direct network effect for virality uh, to take, to, to take uh, into effect. And network effect means that as the number of people grows, the outcome grows as well. The effect, the potential grows as well. So it's valid for the companies doing business. We say network effect for a telecom operator means that the number of people who uses the uh, operator uh, as the number goes up, the value that you drive goes up. So it's the same for uh, virality. It goes uh, in a similar uh, way. As the number of people uh, watches the video, as the number of people invites, to, invites you to participate in that event, uh, the, the, the chance that you will be invited and you will be participated in the event increases. And it goes mouth to mouth. It's not a push marketing event. It just comes uh, to you as, a, uh, as an invitation from your friends. Or as someone, hey, look at that cute video on YouTube. Uh, maybe it's the reason why so many cat videos are on YouTube and why they are so popular. It goes mouth to mouth. And another one is it's 
unofficial. You don't need an official marketing campaign or strategy to go it, uh, spread and become viral. And uh, finally, when incentives are in place, virality works better. In that case, uh, you made donation, you, you, may, you had good feelings, you had pride and prestige for yourself. In the uh, business setting, for example, Dropbox and Hot, Hotmail are some of the companies which uses this viral effect uh, correctly than others. For example, when you invite uh, your friends to register for Dropbox, then you get 250 megabytes of free space uh, for your Dropbox. Uh, for example, Hotmail, when they first started in the late 90s as an email service, in all the uh, footer section of your email, Hotmail put, uh, put the sentence, okay, this email is brought to you by Hotmail. Click on the link and get your email service as well. So this created an awareness for the people who got an email and uh, created an urge for them to click on it and to become registered members of uh, Hotmail. So you can apply these techniques to your uh, business and uh, your ideas events so you can get more viral. As you get more viral, we can measure the firm's capacity or the idea's capacity to go viral in terms of a metric called viral coefficients. Viral coefficients shows period to period increases in your uh, viewership, in your purchases, in your number of acquired customers, it depends on the metric that you, uh, that you take into account, but it tells you about how you grow. For example, if you have a thousand customers in month one and it goes uh, to 300 in month two and nine, uh, 90 in nine, month three and uh, like that, then your viral coefficient is below one which means, uh, I mean, in this case it is 0 0.3, which means your number of customers are decreasing at a rate of 30%. On the other hand, if you have the same number of customers in each period, this means that you do not have a viral component and your company has a stable, uh, stable customer base. Whereas, if you grow at a rate uh, like from 1,000 to 1,300, 1,600, etc. Then in this example, you have a viral coefficient of more than one and you have the potential to grow. You have potential for exponential growth, uh, potential to get more customers uh, for your business. So in order to have a viral component, you should measure the metric which is important to you and you should measure that from period to period. It can be month to month, week to week, day to day, uh, year to year is I mean, a, a too long period. So I suggest for a startup to measure that for week to week. And there are also some companies which claim to engineer virality. One of the companies, famous companies is called BuzzFeed. Maybe you have seen some of the news from that company. What they do is they create and share and publish content uh, which has some viral elements. Like they are simple, they are one, uh, they are fun. Uh, they create immediacy, they create curiosity. They want you to share that content. There's a similar company like Onedio uh, in Turkish as well. So the contents in these websites are quizzes or news or polls. For example, one of them, are you Maria or Link? So you can make the quiz and then decide which character are you. You can see which character are you. And then you can send it to your friends and you can share it on Facebook, TV tour, and then it goes viral. So they crack the virality. In another example for Onedio, in addition to creating content by themselves, they also create content by the, with the brands. For example, in this example, uh, it's in Turkish, but it says, in 10 items, this is the uh, situation uh, of a person who didn't go to vacation. And it says that they created this content with Pegasus Airlines in Turkey. Pegasus Airlines is using Onedio as a channel to create virality for the platform and in an effort to generate some awareness and some, some buzz about their company. And 
people share th those content like uh, they are published by Onidio, but they just put the tag, this content has been created with Pegasus uh, Airline in cooperation with Pegasus Airline. We call this kind of content as native advertising. We call it as native advertising because uh, this is, again, not a push marketing strategy. It feels natural. You can say this kind of ads on newspapers, newspapers as well. Someone, sometimes you read the news and uh, you feel like it's a real news and then you just read the note that, okay, this is an, this is an ad this is an, or this is an advertorial. So this is similar to an advertorial, but it is done in social media. So it is much more easily trackable and shareable. Another example to virality is can be from the user side. So not only we can engineer or not only it can be for a cause or a company. In that case, Dave Carroll, who is a musician himself, uh, goes, uh, goes into United Airlines for flight. But at the end of the flight, he discovers that his tailor-made guitar, which costs around $3,500, has been broken during the flight. And then after, after he arrives, he calls United and tells them that, okay, his guitar has been broken, so he needs to uh, get the damage back uh, from the company. But the company tells it's his problem. The United Airlines will not reimburse the, will not compensate for the broken guitar. So uh, they even don't say sorry about it. They just say it's the user's fault. It's not their fault. After 15 months of uh, dealing with uh, the United Airlines, Dave Carroll at the end, okay, if you say so, then this is what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shoot a video and I'll put it on YouTube and let's see what happens. And then after the, after the video, everything starts to change. Now let me show you an excerpt from the video and let's continue after that. United, United, you broke my Taylor guitar. United, United, some big help you are. You broke it, you should fix it. Your lie just admit it. I should have flown with someone else or gone by car. Cause United breaks guitars When we landed in Nebraska I confirmed what I suspected Mike Taylor had been the victim of a vicious act of malice at old hair As the video goes viral Actually it goes viral really fast I mean uh, Dave puts the video on 6th of July and then on 7th of July it was on the news on web and then on Los Angeles Times and then in just less than one day thousands of people tens of thousands of people have viewed the video and put comments and on 8th of July it was on Huffington Post NBC Chicago on 9th of July it was on CNN CBS Associated Press on 10th of July more than 1.6 million people have watched the video in just a few days and two weeks later, around 5 million people have watched the video. And since then, millions of people, hundreds of million people have watched his YouTube video. What happened then? The company, uh, after, after the video took off, the company told Dave, okay, they would like to compensate the uh, guitar's damage. But at that time, Dave said, no, it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> Uh, you should have done that before. And this is a great example to show that a user-generated content, a user-generated video can be a great threat for a company, but at the same time, if it's used really well, can be a great asset for a company, for the companies who know how to deal with that, how to use uh, those user-generated content. So, for this user-generated content, we can say users are more empowered than ever. They are encouraged to share, comment, and act on everything about the company. Now, people are used to it. 
So it's the YouTube generation, it's the Google generation. So we need to understand that. Companies need to understand that. We are, we are not just part of it. We are the user generated uh, generation. We are the user generation. So company user interactions should be sincere, honest, transparent, immediate, and more importantly, fair. Companies should show fairness to the people by using those channels. By building on these uh, findings, we can say some companies create lots of revenue by this user-generated content. YouTube is one of them. When they first acquired by Google, some people said, okay, $1.6 billion to pay just for a website. But now YouTube proves it's more valuable than the amount Google paid to YouTube more than 10 years ago. TripAdvisor is another business which relies on the reviews of the users for hotels, restaurants, vacation rentals. They have a huge business uh, on user reviews. And from Turkey, I can give an example uh, website called Shikayet Var, which means there is a complaint. Turkish people love to, love to complain. So also when we look at the research, uh, I can say people write more negative reviews on the websites than the positive reviews. So people, uh, people like to complain more than they like to appreciate. So TripAdvisor does a good job managing online reviews. It's one of the most visited websites in the world and they have more than 200 million reviews, more than 5 million businesses, 84 million members, and they have a unique monthly visitors of 375 million. So it's huge, it's huge. So how are they so successful? Their main concentration area is the hotel business. They generate money by uh, working with hotels. Hotels pay some uh, user fees and at the same time, they generate money by lead generation. So when people visit the website and click on a hotel website, uh, other hotels or other hotel business aggregators like uh, Booking, Expedia, Hotels, Orbit, they pay some amount of money to TripAdvisor for each lead uh, that TripAdvisor sends to them. In addition to that, why hotel business? It's fragmented, which means that there are lots of different hotels, even there's a chain, uh, the, the chains are different from each other as well. I mean, the, the hotels within a chain, the experience that you uh, have in a, in a hotel in one country might change in another country. And there's also large variance in user experience related to that. So some user might love the hotel and other might not because they might have different expectations. And it's an experience product, it's an experiential product. So uh, each time you go to hotel, you experience, uh, you experience the service that uh, you purchased. And also you can have such a limited uh, experience on all the hotels in the world or on a, on a location. So there is only way to learn. The only way to learn is to learn from others who have experienced it before. And for all the reasons that I have told, it's a high involvement purchase. So you consider a lot before purchasing a hotel product because it's too risky to go for a holiday with your family, which will be a bad experience for you. So you do not want to take risk and you go there and you read the reviews. So why people write reviews? On the one side, it provides value to the user. So these are so obvious before you going there, you research and investigate. On the other hand, users feel motivation to write the reviews because they feel that they give back to community and also they get recognition. In some forums or review sites, users who write reviews and also users who rate reviews also get special status like the expert status or uh, novice or medium status. There are different status in the user reviews. So users who give comments and re reviews are also uh, recognized and credited. In Amazon, in uh, Zappos, in Booking, there are also uh, appreciation for people who, who write reviews. 
So in about all this user generation content and virality, what helps us is the use of social media. There are, there are lots of different types of social media and some people might say, okay, this is the best social media to use. You, you should use Facebook, you should use Twitter, you should use Google. What I will say is there is not a single social media, social media platform. What is best for you depends on what you would like to achieve. What is your objective? What is your campaign? And at the end, what I would suggest is to use all those different channels for the purposes that you would like to achieve and they will provide you a complementary experience uh, for your customers. So some people also push the similar content within Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook. Although this makes it convenient for you to share content, at the end, all the users in these channels expect different type of communication between you. So what you should do is you should target, uh, you, you should understand what users are expecting in, in one social media platform and you should develop your content according to the expectations of, of the people uh, in those platforms. So when you create a social marketing strategy, social media marketing strategy, you should create a special strategy for Facebook, another one for Twitter, another one for Instagram and YouTube, and you should use all those strategies as complementary strategies for, to each other. They should complement uh, all. In all those social media platforms, allow marketers to have interactions with their users or to be users, potential users. Sometimes companies uh, misunderstand that and they mix the number of likes, followers, fans with the, uh, num with, with the real customers. Okay, you should use these commands and platforms with, ca with caution. You should use them to learn, to share, to create uh, a community. And this term was brought uh, to literature uh, in a 2001 uh, Journal of Consumer Research article. And a brand, in a brand community, there are social relationships. There is a shared consciousness within the people in the community. There is a we feeling. There is social identity. Some people define themselves with the brands. For example, people who love Nutella. Nutella, uh, I mean the... Uh, chocolate cream that you put uh, on your bread in the breakfast. So, so there are some people who love the brand. They identify themselves with the brand. And so they have a social feeling, we feeling with others who use the same product. So even for a consumer goods, you can create that. You don't need a luxury product to have this we feeling. Another one is rituals and traditions. In an online community, people have some rituals. So we say, okay, this is not the way we, we do things here. Uh, so in the offline setting, for example, people who love motorbikes, there is a Harley Davidson motorbike club. So they come together, they go to events, so they have some way of life. But with social media, this is also possible in online settings. In addition to that, there is a moral responsibility feeling. People have collective action. They have a group unity. They have a moral responsibility to each other. So in the forums, maybe if you have visited some forums, you can say that people love to help each other in those forums when they have a problem. And some main factors which affect branding engagement, which is important to marketers, can be summarized as follows. One of them is the brand. As I say, people would love to identify themselves with the brand. The more they identify themselves, they will be more engaged with the social media uh, platform and, and the brand community. For example, with a Facebook page, a Facebook brand page. Another one is the product. So uh, with the involvement and the, depending on the involvement of the people in the product category and the complexity of the product, their engagement within a brand community will, will change. Another one is the customer. Okay, from the user side, how expert is the customer? What is the membership duration? Is he member to other communities as well in the same product category or uh, for competitor brands? 
Another one is community. What is the social benefit in joining this Facebook brand page? What are the functional benefits? And finally, uh, the context. How many people are there already in the community? Is it only a few people or is it millions of people? Who governs the community? Is it brand governed or community governed? What, are, what is the valence of information? Are they positive or negative? What is the medium? Is it in Twitter, Facebook, Instagram? In order to understand those issues, I'd like to share one of my research uh, in that context. So you see two examples from a Facebook brand page that uh, I have uh, created for a fictitious brand, for a hypothetical brand. The brand is a healthy snack. And in one hypothetical setting, you see the cover picture is the, uh, is the product itself. On another uh, page, you see now the cover picture is healthy life, healthy living. So it shows people, not the product. And also, you see in one example, the size is just 800 people. In the other, the size is like 80,000 people. One of them is governed officially by the product, by the brand, which I call Cheres Bar. And on the other, the page is governed by the community itself. It's not governed by the company. So when we do the research, we, we did this within, within Facebook. And we randomly assigned people in an experimental setting to one of those conditions. And at the end, what we have found is a brand is more liked when it is a category-based communication rather than a product-based communication. So in this specific example, for a healthy snack food, if you would like your brand to be loved, liked more, then you should use healthy life instead of a healthy snack. Finally, I would like to finish by saying the key element is a successful, uh, long-term, meaningful relationship with your customers, with your users. It's not a short-term strategy. You should target for long-term benefits for you and for your customers. So you should create a long-term strategy uh, for your brand and for your company. Thank you all.